Murray Hall Community Trust is a, it's a charity that works with the communities and how we do things is, is about working alongside people and trying to find solutions in the community and empowering people. So facilitating that empowerment, making sure they have information to make the correct um, informed choices. So when you talk about compassionate communities, it's about the community looking after its own in at really vulnerable stages of their lives, end of life and for those living with bereavement after. More and more people rely on medical services at end of life. So if you think about how many people would like to be at home at the end of life, is which is the majority. But currently the situation is that the majority still die in institutions like hospitals. So how do we change that? Some of the answers there is that we need to be better supported at home. It's a mixture of family, friends, professional services. It's what you have around you, those support systems. But one of the crucial ones is your family. When people are um, diagnosed with cancer or life-limiting illness, and when they get to maybe the palliative care stage, the rest of the community don't know what to say. So they don't say anything and they stay away. So one of the things is it's breaking down that um, barrier of having the conversations around that myth and fear around death, dying and loss. So that when in your circle you have got someone who is ill, you're not frightened of just the subject. Even if that's saying, I don't know what to say, but I'm here. The British are very good at saying, how are you? Is I'm oh, well, fine, thank you. We want to put on an exterior that everything's okay. People find it really hard to ask for help because we live in a society that wants you to be independent. So trying to be dependent on someone else or interdependent on someone else, people find quite difficult. So it's helping people say it's okay to ask for help. When you are dying, there's still all the practical things that need to happen in your life, like putting out the rubbish, changing the bed, and you know, a bottle of milk. So there's practical things that people can do, but they may not realise that those little things make a real difference to people remaining at home. It's, it's helping people to understand that their small act of kindness or compassion can make a difference to that person. We have lots of people come along and they need to rebuild their social network because they used to be a couple and now they're on their own so they have to find new ways of being on their own. And they really struggle walking into new groups. So we went along and spoke to the walking group and said how would you feel about being part of a compassionate community. So they were really in favour because when you are bereaved and just walking and talking can be quite therapeutic. So we provided training for them to understand what bereavement feels like. So that if they did have people on their group and they started to cry, it's no big deal, it's just part of grief. So instead of the bereavement group, there's these groups that you can go to in the community. So you're not stigmatising them, you're not labelling them, you're normalising bereavement and grief, but helping them to feel accepted into a walking group where they could build up their own social networks. There has been a number of groups who we've helped, we've supported to increase their capacity to become compassionate communities. That's included a walking group, a gardening group, We've worked with schools, so they've become more attentive to people in their pupils uh, living with loss. Mostly it's hospices that provide palliative care, but the hospices aren't everywhere, but community groups are. Community groups have been doing befriending, supporting people in lots of different ways. So there's a lot we can do on capitalising some of the support that's already happening. So it's about helping them to extend their reach and their boundaries to people at the end of life. And it's about normalising, because death is not a medical incident. It's just part of life. And I think the less fearful we are, the better chance that we have of achieving the kind of death that we all want. <laughs>